So to begin, we'll look at some of the historical influences on the multicultural society, um, at least in the modern age, beginning probably most um, recognizably is with the post-World War II era. Uh, this is due in part to the increased um, role of the United States on the world stage, uh, especially with the success of the Marshall Plan. Um, you know, for the European Recovery Program, was a project put in place at the Paris uh, Economic Conference in 1947 to foster economic recovery in certain European countries after World War II. And so a lot more dialogue was going on, a lot more um, interactions as well. Um, other international activities include that um, promoted international economy, uh, obviously technology, uh, the internet, <clears throat> just most recently, social development, and um, you know, the increase of foreign exchange students, um, things like that, the, the uh, Peace Corps, um, the increased role of the United States in um, how things, you know, towing things in together with um, their, the uh, alliances with other countries and uh, the United Nations and trying to control outbreaks of wars and uh, human atrocities and things like that. So a lot more interaction going on in between countries um, as a result of, of the um, aftermath of World War II. And then, of course, things increasing as a result to what we see today, obviously, with the um, speed of travel with airlines, uh, communication with um, computers, internet, mobile devices, cell phones, uh, people are able to play. <laughs> Uh, you know, computer games all over the world with people at different in different countries, just as long as uh, they have an internet connection. So a lot of different things influencing culture. We talked earlier uh, in a previous module about the media, and um, that obviously has had a huge effect as well. So along with the influences, you know, historical influences, it also presented. Um, some major challenges. Obviously, uh, without understanding other cultures or having a, a good, uh, um, you know, information base educated on how or why cultures do what they do, rather than oh, it's different and therefore it's wrong. Um, attitude, uh, you know, without knowing, having good understanding of what other cultures and why they do things, uh, really causes people you know, to act out of ignorance in their responses and for an unfortunate period of time, uh, a popular book was called The Ugly American. Maybe you've heard of that term before, but um, this was, you know, coming out of the 50s, early 60s, uh, where well, this was a huge um, uh, issue with Americans traveling overseas and being loud and gregarious and somewhat, you know, offensive to other uh, places when they traveled and things like that. And so, um, just not taking into consideration other people's cultures and uh, doing things that they would normally do in the in in their in America that weren't necessarily acceptable in other countries. Other re things that have uh, necessitated the need are things like the Peace Corps that we talked about in the last slide of you know people becoming involved in the Peace Corps and uh, seeing that as an opportunity to go and and help in other places. You know, obviously the the motives were were good. But without having uh, training and understanding um, of the culture that they were going into, why things were done the way they were, uh, or people acted the way they do in certain countries, uh, people that worked with the Peace Corps could come across as offensive as well or not understanding and be discouraged. And, and also uh, think of you know how globalization has expanded so much with business uh, professionals, students, uh, going all over the world as exchange students coming in, expatriates working in other countries as well. And so all these challenges were as, gave, gave rise to the need to have some form of training to where they would help people uh, going into different cultures and helping to prepare them for the, the things that they w were going to experience and to um, help develop their intercultural sensitivity as well. And uh, this continues to be a challenge even today as things are uh, continue to be learned and people struggle and come back and can inform uh, those who do the training in different areas related to um, setting up, you know, a home, schooling for the kids, um, 
all different kinds of things, communication, uh, just all all different sort of, of uh, things out there that will influence people for um, being successful in a different culture. So here we see on the left of on this diagram is the degree of adjustment and then on the bottom is the time in months. And so we see that the uh, amount of time you spend in a culture will uh, affect the, the amount of, uh, of adjustment and the amount of um, satisfaction that you ultimately have in working in a different culture. Uh, the first few months, extremely difficult, you know, after you come off the honeymoon, um, months three to four, four to six, pretty much in that four to six area is pretty tough till you can start coming out of it after months six through nine and uh, begin to uh, adjust and have some success. And one of the things that this study found um, by Lysgaard, who first identified this, was that um, the success rate for folks working in different cultures um, was heavily dependent on their satisfaction of their job and what they were doing. So whether you're an educator or a trainer for another company, you know, believing in what you're doing um, is a, and, and having the desire and the passion for um, your your work is, is a huge predictor of your success and really does play an important role. Um, and, and so was the of, of organizational socialization as well um, but you see this U, U curve here and and the importance of the first of the first year in particular uh, making it through that first year and to um, moving on then to the second third fourth years of really becoming more of a master in that in that culture and being adjusted so this is the U, U curve and we'll next look at a, a W curve So here as we look at the W curve, you're going through somewhat similar to the same um, process, except just a little bit different, more of a peaks and valleys. I think, as I discussed in an earlier module, you know, sometimes your um, the stresses of being in a different culture will affect you. So you um, maybe not have a culture shock where you go way down deep, you know, in a in a in, in one of these peaks, like in in the in the area of three here on the diagram or seven, um, but the stress is wearing on you, and then you have so many events like that that ultimately um, lead you into culture shock. But hopefully, the longer time you spend in a country, the 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 less those will become. Um, however, understanding and realizing that you're going through all this. Um, you know, you have a honeymoon stage and then you have the acceptance and the, you know, developing strategies to cope and uh, coming out of your be feeling homesick and depressed, um, you know, finding ways within the culture to keep yourself motivated, um, developing friendships and, um, you know, learning how to, you know, find things within the culture that, that excite you um, can be a huge predictor into your uh into your uh, success as well. So the W curve is just a different way of looking at it. I think it provides a um, little bit different nuance and maybe kind of help you see that, you know, not just do you actually feel that U um, uh, curve that we saw on the previous slide, but you may go in up and down at certain times um, through your experience, even though you may have been there longer than a year, you know, after year two or three, maybe you'll experience something again where you dip down in the W curve. So just wanted you to be aware of that as well, but to, to be able to develop strategies to, to, pull, to pull out of that and to become more of an adjusted and adapted into a new culture as you acculturate into and assimilate into that new culture. Therefore, I think looking at the previous two slides and re realizing the, the issues of working in a multicultural society, you know, how it's changing so much and, you know, going through these different periods of culture stress and culture shock, how important it is to have and to design new training techniques for the changing global society and for working within a multicultural society. 
So, you know, really pretty much beg, borrow, and steal, you know, work through some different ideas. You know, as we talked about yesterday or in previous modules of being able to um, think through a strategy of maybe where you integrate different processes. So you some experiential as long and along with some didactic teaching. So not as it just one, you know, just you're giving training or teaching someone about things just by giving them data, but you're also putting them in case studies or in role playing, uh, things like that to kind of help work through it, even even using computer and, and animations to work through uh, different case studies and, and, and scenarios that you can um, experience uh, with with uh, computer computer programs and, and things like that. Lots of neat things that are out there to help us uh, with realism and realistic uh, settings and things, videos and using movies and um, all kinds of documentaries that are out there as well as tapping other people from that maybe have worked in that culture and some of the things that they'd gone through and to be able to share that with, with the group and to provide uh, a channel or an outlet where people, when they go through these experiences, can, can reach out to someone without feeling that they're, um, you know, a bad person or that they're going to be sent home if they have feelings, but that they can just have someone where it's a sounding board to be able to, to share some of the feelings that they're going through um, when they're feeling culture stress or culture shock and to just to be able to have a sounding board to, to express some of those uh, issues and feelings. So I think those are some things that we need to really consider moving forward. Um, as things continue to change so much. And the other thing is even providing, you know, folks opportunities for, um, for, for R&R &R and making sure that that's being done and taken care of. So when people get worn down, they don't, you know, go into a place where they become, you know, their emotions take over and become depressed. So providing outlets, you know, activities like that, that can, can encourage and, and keep your, um, the folks that you're working with, whether it's in an institution an education institution or a, an HR training, you're doing the training, leading that for for a company, um, finding creative ways to help uh, with the uh, simulation process for uh, your the people that you're working with. So as we move into the conclusion summary of the this presentation, I think this question is good to consider is that how is personal change associated with cultural adaptation for you personally how will you know being helping you um, change your attitude do you, or are you going to be stuck in the ways that you think if if you're not willing to change um, can you can you really think that you're going to be uh, successful in a different culture um, if you're pretty much stuck that your way is the right way are you, are you willing to to be able to um, to change and to think about things differently and be open to different to differences and and so I think this is something that we really need to consider and think through seriously before jumping in and saying well I can do this or do that and and not really understand the ramifications of of how it takes to work in a multicultural society and being more accepting and um, willing to consider things from a different angle and a different viewpoint um, than, than coming over as the ugly American with all the right um, ideas and trying to change others into your way of thinking, but rather how can you change your mindset of how I can educate and work with these people um, in my host culture and use their culture in a meaningful way to communicate uh, the things that you want to teach and the things that you want to um, provide training in, in, in all those areas. So um, really, it's a more about us changing than us trying to change uh, somebody else on the other side in a different culture. So ultimately, I think it's more about um, we need to consider things, consider these ideas in terms of differences rather than than as a deficit in a different culture. Well, they don't know any better. They're doing it that way and they're wrong. My way is the right way. No, think of it more as it's just different. It's not necessarily wrong. It's cultural. Things are different culturally and it's not a negative. It um, many times may be a different way of doing things, maybe even a better way. Um, or a way maybe you've never even considered and maybe ought to try. So I think ultimately to be true, 
um, successful in our ability to change is to really to change our thinking about how we think about other things, other ways of doing things, rather than thinking that it's wrong because you were accustomed to doing things a certain way, but to think more of it as just a different way to do it. And, and that's many times can be uh, more freeing and liberating and to uh, be more accepting of the way cultures and people in other cultures work in the, in the multicultural society that we all are, um, you know, wanting to work in and maybe already currently are working in. So that can go a long way in helping to diffuse a lot of the frustration and the, the cultural stresses and culture shocks that we go through because so many things are different. The language is different. The way people interact with one another is different than we do. Uh, maybe the skin color is different. Maybe hair is different. Hair color is different. Um, maybe the way their uh, facial structure is different. Everything is so different. And think of that as not, ne as not wrong, but just different. And I think that would be the, the proper mindset. Because if we, if we think of it as a negative, uh, that's something that's really going to hinder our effectiveness and most candidly probably means that we're going to be um, coming back home to our home country because um, we're just not going to be able to be successful because we're not being willing to be flexible. So just hope these thoughts here in this uh, presentation have been helpful for you and for this module. So thank you for listening.